Ahoy hoy, I'm Planet Walk, and something that flat earthers often try to debunk is gravity. And they do it in all kinds of ways, whether it be with an egg, whether it be with a bull, but every time they try to debunk it, they always fail at it. However, their failures don't stop them from trying. In fact, I recently found three different flat earthers who all tried to debunk gravity in their own way. So let's start with everyone's favourite flat earther, CC. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you may be. Uh, CC here, Chris, from New York, uh, Westchester County, uh, 21822. Gravity. Gravity as a, as a whole seems to only really cling on to certain things. Well, no, everything in the universe is affected by gravity, no matter where it is. It's just how much gravity is it affected by. Like, for example, Halley's Comet. Well, that wraps around every 60 years or something like that. You know, the funny thing is about gravity with the sun. You know what the sun is? That big yellow ball in the sky. Yes, Chris, we all know what the sun is, or well, most of us know what the sun is at least. I think that there might be some flat earthers that don't know what the sun is, in which case I actually appreciate you describing what the sun is for those flat earthers. So my question for Chris here is, he described the sun as a ball. Has he ever thought about why it's a sphere? When it comes to Earth being a globe, we know why the sun is a sphere, because of gravity. However, on flat earth, if the sun is a sphere, you don't seem to have answered that question of why it's a sphere. That's what is causing all of these so-called planets and creating a solar system. So let me ask you a question. If the sun can create a gravitational pull on Halley's Comet, or any comet for that matter, uh, has anybody forgotten about the moons? What about those? No Chris, no one's forgotten about the moons. The sun's gravity still acts on the moons. It's just that when a moon orbits a planet, that planet happens to also be orbiting around the sun. Now, if the moon is orbiting the planet, and the planet is orbiting the sun, what is that moon also orbiting around? For any flat earthers struggling to answer that question, the answer is the sun. Moons also orbit the sun because they orbit a planet. So the next person who attempted to debunk gravity was Mikey Smith. Mikey, can you do any better than CC? Gravity fails again. So we've all seen and know how tennis balls, soccer balls, when you throw them into a pool, they tend to float. This is correct, and this is due to something called buoyancy. Buoyancy basically acts against gravity. They don't actually sink to the bottom of the pool. Here's blueberries. Uh, why are they not sinking to the bottom of my protein shake? <laughs> they are floating on the top. And as I explained earlier, this is due to buoyancy. When the buoyant force on a submerged object is larger than the force of gravity on that object, then it's going to go upwards. I wonder why. Maybe because they're less dense than the damn milk is? Okay, so here is something that will just make Flat Earth's brains melt for a second. And that is, buoyancy has nothing to do with how dense an object is. Yes, it does play a role in determining whether an object will float or not, but it does not have any part in the buoyant force. Here is an experiment that you can do at home to verify what I'm saying. Fill your sink up with water and put a bowl in it. Now, most bowls that you do this with will float. And we can determine whether the bowl is denser than the water by submerging it. If it sinks after submerging it, well, then it's denser than the water. If it floats after submerging it, well, then it's less dense than the water. 
Now with this you'll find that some of the bowls that were floating were indeed denser than the water. Which raises an interesting question. If density is solely responsible for whether things float or sink, then how come the denser bowls would float on water when empty? Remember that the bowl is denser than everything around it, so if density is responsible for creating a downward force, then it should be pushed downwards, right? Especially if Anthony Riley is right and there's no such thing as buoyancy. Ta-da! The damn berries are not sinking, and I'll even try to push them down. They're not sinking. They just pop back up to the top. Yes, those berries pop back up, but what about china bowls? I've done the dishes more than enough times to know that if I fill up a bowl with water, then it isn't going to float. Now, seeing as Mikey didn't do too well, we've got Brian's logic here to try and redeem Flat Earth for everyone. Brian, no pressure, but it is all riding on you, so take it away. Hey, a force of gravity cannot exist, and I'll explain why. Because objects weigh more in a vacuum than they do in air. So it is true that objects weigh less in a vacuum than they do in air, but that is due to a lack of buoyancy. So, as you rise, you're rising into a lower pressure all the time as you rise. Lower air pressure, that means you're rising closer to a vacuum. That means you have to be gaining weight as you rise and not losing it. Because, because the claim of a force of gravity is that you have the most weight on the ground that's given to you by this claimed force of gravity due to a, a mass attracting mass at, uh, situation. And as you rise away from the earth, that you're actually losing weight because you're moving away from this gravitational force. But that can't happen as we know objects weigh more in a vacuum. So there are a few things that we just need to clarify for everyone here. I hope that everyone can understand that multiple forces can be acting on an object at a time. So for example, the force of gravity can act on an object as well as the force of buoyancy. You can have two forces acting on the same object at the same time in opposite directions. So as objects get further away from the earth, there is less of a buoyant force acting upon them causing them to weigh more but there is also less of a gravitational force acting upon them causing them to weigh less. So the amount that these different forces affect your weight as you move further away from the earth is different. The buoyant force drops off a lot quicker than the force of gravity. This is why you can't just make a helium balloon float all the way into outer space. Well that and the fact that it would pop before it got anywhere close to space. So when you see people claim to be jumping around on the moon and other things like that, know that that stuff is impossible and doesn't happen because objects weigh more in a vacuum, not less. Thank you. I'm sorry, but if you don't have as much gravity acting on something, it isn't going to weigh more even if less buoyancy is acting upon that object. Things weighing more in a vacuum isn't a universal constant, it's just generally true here on Earth. But anyway, that is another Flat Earth Fail compilation done and done. Oh wait, wrong channel. But anyway, leave a like and subscribe if you like that video. Leave a comment letting me know what sort of videos you'd like me to make in the future. As always, a big shout out to my $20 or more patrons. Huge R's, MC Nutkin, Shaky, Wolfie, Mori, Greymore Ghost, Kid Vicious, and Sarcha Campbell. If you want to support me financially, you can do so on Patreon. There should be a link there. But anyway, I will see you in the next video. Between you and me, thank you for watching. I said wrong channel, why is this playing?